It's Tuesday morning and the coffee fairy has been and I'm sporting my new PSS t-shirt. <laughs> so as you can see we've now decamped into the uh, carpenter area. We've got Ton working on the ceilings behind us and Moo and I are now putting the, uh, the main and the mizzen boom fittings back together. So this is the main boom and I noticed that the, uh, the the mouse that we used to guide the cables through the mast, uh, through the boom, uh, had disappeared down that end, and they disappeared inside the mast. So I thought I'd try and find them by pulling them out from this end. And lo and behold, I found a bird's nest. I don't think there's any birds in there and uh, I hope I'm not finding any eggs either but the bird had obviously uh, taken all his uh, nesting straw into the boom and had taken our uh, guidelines in there as well Here we are back in the stainless steel workyard with Yum Master uh, he's just working on our radar bracket. We're using the old bracket, but we need to make a new plate. So he's just built a template. We have to ensure that the uh, bracket itself remains at the same width so it fits. Looks like the Starship Enterprise. Uh, but the sooner we do this, the sooner uh, Moo can then uh, prepare it and spray it. Okay, yep, Moo's going to paint it now. Cheers, Jim. Let's go and see what the ever, ever resourceful Moo's doing. Moo, what are you doing? Uh, painting EPF. Yep. So, these are the remaining deck fittings. We've got uh, the deck spotlight, spinnaker rest. That is the satellite phone antenna, the other spinnaker rest, a new uh, gearbox cooler because the old one had literally fallen apart, and uh, the AIS GPS mushroom. So some of these are aluminium, so he's etch priming the aluminium first, and then after that he'll be spray painting it. Unfortunately not with Snow White to match the mast and the deck because we've run out. Uh, so he's going to be using Matterhorn White, which is what we painted the engine with. A little bit more blue. Here we are inside Dan's tent, the spray tent, and um, just got a couple of things to show you. Firstly, along this side, hanging up are the Remaining the remainders of the fittings on the mast. You'd have seen the mast that Jamie's been working on, and there are one or two fittings that still needed painting, so they've been painted this week in a beautiful white to go up on the mast. But the main thing is this structure here, and this is the support for our radar. Uh, the old radar we had sat on this base here. In fact, it wasn't this base. It was a smaller base. Plus we've now got a new radar as part of our whole BNG navigation equipment. We had to remove the base. The machine shop cut a new piece to fit exactly our new piece. Put it back on to these here, which um, the struts, I suppose, that go onto the mast. And the new radar will sit on top here, all done in a week. Fish wash done and ready. So whilst Ton and Tui put up the ceiling in the saloon, Dean is having some fun and games with this light switch, which is fixed up in the galley. Just one thing, in Thailand, they like to put their light switches upside down. So I've told him to put it the right way up, and it now means that the right switch turns off the left light and vice versa. So oh, it's looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice and bright. Well done, Dean. Yeah. 
Now on Esper we don't really have such things as pink jobs and blue jobs, we divide them fairly evenly, but one thing you'll always find Liz doing is uh, plumbing and she's an expert at toilets. Well, she's cleaning a lid here. Liz, yeah. tell us about this lid and why you're cleaning it. Okay, this is the lid to Millie's old loo and it's a baby flake. So you've got the pan and the lid and the hinges, ornate hinges, all in bronze and chromed as well. Came with the boat, so it's at least 20, 25 years old and it's an original baby Blake. And uh, we don't need it anymore, so we just wondered how much it might be worth. And to buy a spare part, because they don't make them anymore, is about 650 quid. So I suddenly thought it was worth <laughs> cleaning this up and maybe ebaying it for 100 quid when we get back. Right, so special offer to anyone watching this video. Liz is coming back to the UK and if you want an original Baby Blake's lid, bargain price, yours for, well, make Whatever. us an offer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, and it is in really good nick. Everything works. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. You could re-chrome it, but I wouldn't, because I think that the chrome and the um, over the over the uh, bronze looks great. After disassembling the max prop, the shaft was removed, and the yard workers set to and removed the old cutlass bearing. Of course after 10 years it showed some signs of wear and will be replaced. We'll be using Torlon for our new bearing, something that the yard fits onto ferry boats. Talk us through it Mr Hammock. What's wrong? Uh, then, yeah. Pitting on the shaft. Mm -hmm. And this is on the inside of the shaft, um, probably about where the stuffing box is. So if you've got any ideas, let us know. Since filming this clip, we've resorted to our favourite sailing resource, the YBW Forums. We've been using the Practical Boat Owner and Liverpool Forums for 10 years now, and they provide an invaluable service for getting answers to all manner of boaty problems. After posting up a picture of our shaft, our fave mechanical expert, Viv Cox, a chartered engineer specialising in metallurgy and mechanical engineering, provided some insight into how and why this pitting can occur. Viv's own website provided all the answers regarding crevice corrosion, so if you have a moment, do check out coxengineering.sharepoint.com. Viv's not the only expert on YBW, and over the years, many experts in their fields have provided advice and ideas for our ongoing sailing issues. There are too many to name check, but we are grateful to those who have helped us bumble our way through boat maintenance. Any minute now, walking along from the right, you should see our swimming platform. I think they're gonna be sizing it up, measuring it to put on the back of the boat. There it is. Now, before you ask, no, the swimming platform is not going to be this big. The idea is that it will go through the transom and will be counterpoised inside the lazarette with Holden plates mounted on the transom, which will be reinforced. Also, the length will be cut down so that it only protrudes just beyond the Pacific Plus wind pilot. Unfortunately, the template we've been using is the template for the wooden platform itself and didn't take into account the thickness of the bar. So currently, in order for it to fit through the transom, we'd have to raise it up where it would sit somewhere halfway up. Of course, this is impractical, so now the workshop is bending the sides of the platform inwards by welding turnbuckles to prevent the bend from springing outwards. If it turns out the measurements were completely incorrect, we may have to start again and I'd be interested to know who fits the bill for that lovely bit of stainless tubing. 
What do we have here? What is this? This, uh... Yesterday uh, you cut something. The shower. Yeah, let's have a look at this. This is the hole that Moo's cut out and you can see that's the honeycomb. If you remember, this is one of the first things Moo did. He made this box and we've cut out this chunk to accommodate something we've never owned before. A letterbox. <coughs> That's you. This is a rather neat little uh, whale shower unit. We're at the back of the boat by the way, so the idea is, is that after swimming in the water we come out the swimming platform and up and grab a shower. So now Moo and I are doing the horrible task of drilling holes back into the deck. The idea is, is that this is going to run down into the lazarette. There we go. It's going to run across the back there and it's going to follow down into the uh, exhaust pipe and follow the same cavity as the exhaust pipe. And obviously we'll seal it all up afterwards. So we're using the HEP2O system, which is a push fit uh, piping system, and that's because we used to have the old Acorn system on this boat, and um, we still have most of our plumbing with the old Acorn system, so the HEP2O fits it nicely, and it's a 15mm gauge pipe, and uh, quite easy to work with, it's very flexible, as you can see it bends quite well, so that will help us bend it round down below and uh, fit into the old uh, plumbing system. Right Liz, you haven't seen yet this, follow me, just film your reaction. It's not fitted but I've uh, just offered it up to... Oh look at that! Talk us through it. Well, why, this... did, why did we choose this tap? Ooh, I love this tap. <laughs> this tap, actually we bought this tap months ago in Hatiai and I always wanted to have a tap like Trish had which is one tap attached to it a shower so the shower remains as a tap when it's on the sink but you can pull it out and use it as a head shower body shower you can wash your hair in the sink if you want to or you can just have a shower in the bathroom and here it is and we look high and low for it and we found one and it just looks so good there Tap, basin, and when I want to, I just put it out and have a shower. <laughs> oh, and of course the other marvellous use for this is uh, doing it the Asian style. You don't need loo paper. It stretches far enough to the loo for washing at the bottom. <laughs> you'll see some development since last week in here, the saloon, namely the ceiling and what we love about it is the way it's given the place even more width. Where we had simple single strips all the way along here, they've gone, it's now this lovely smooth surface with just the light tracks here and it, it imparts width, space and depth which is what we were aiming at all the way through. That's it for week 31. We now say goodbye to Liz, who returns to the UK for a couple of months, leaving me to handle the accounts as well as the final part of the refit. She's under the illusion that the boat will be finished when she returns. Poor girl. <laughs>